So today we're going to start a video series that we'll do on uh, reverse engineering a oil pump. And this is going to incorporate the entire assembly of this oil pump. Uh, so as we start breaking this down, we'll take a look at the internal features that we need to create, uh, the various parts that we need to scan, and uh, get a rough idea of what this process is going to be like. So we'll start by taking a few of these bolts out. And while I'm doing this, we'll talk a little bit about the scanner that we're going to use. So sitting right here beside me is a Artec Space Spider. Uh, it's a blue structured light 3D scanner that is really good for scanning uh, smaller, high accuracy components, kind of like this oil pump that you see here. So we'll get this final screw out and we'll start taking a look at all of the pieces that we're going to need to scan and reverse engineer for this process. So we can start with the cap of this oil pump here. We can see we've got a nice machine surface on one side. There's a cast surface on the other side. Uh, with a few different core features that we'll need to build out. Inside the pump, we've got a uh, gear with a shaft on it. We've got a free floating gear, and then we've got a, a pin inside of this pump housing that we're not gonna remove, we'll just leave it in there. And that's really the core components of this full assembly. So we'll go ahead and get started with this by scanning the housing itself and walking you through the process of what it's like to scan this object and process it inside of Artec Studio 16. All right, so now we've got Artec Studio 16 pulled up and we can start by clicking on our scan tab. And the first thing we'll notice is the temperature of our scanner is displayed. Uh, for the space spider, if we want to get the most accurate scans possible, uh, we traditionally want to let the scanner warm up for a few minutes. So its uh, operating temperature is somewhere around 36 degrees Celsius, which is going to ensure that everything is warmed up and expanded uh, correctly to give us the most accurate scans that we possibly can. It's not necessary for all applications, uh, but if you have a spare few minutes to let the scanner warm up, it definitely is going to increase the accuracy of your scans. So the second thing to note is I'm going to start scanning this housing and we've got it sitting on top of our rotary table. That makes this process really simple. Uh, so when I turn the scanner on, we can see that casting is showing up relatively well here in the field of view of our scanner. So I'll go ahead and start scanning. And this is where that rotary table uh, makes a huge difference because I can just start moving the part around, <clears throat> looking at it here on screen and paying attention to any areas where I may want a little bit more detail. So for instance, up here in the top of the part where there's some uh, various geometry that may be a little bit more important for us inside that cavity. I can really focus in on it and move the part around quickly and capture all of the various aspects of that geometry. And then going from there, we can simply move down to another portion of the part. And one other important thing you'll note is we have this color gradient going across our part. So as I get closer with the scanner or further away, we can see that color gradient changes from orange to green to blue. And that green is going to say that, the green is going to tell us that we are within the optimal uh, depth of field. So we're at the optimal distance away from our part to be able to have as accurate of a scan as possible. So we'll just capture a little bit more here. We'll go ahead and stop that scan 
And now what I want to do is I want to rotate this part into a couple of different orientations to make sure that we've got all of the information that we need. We've got a really good scan of the outside of our part currently, uh, but the Artec Space Platter is a line of sight 3D scanner, which means that it's not going to scan uh, the internals of the part unless it can physically see it or you can physically look at it uh, with your eyes. So we go ahead and start working on that process uh, by flipping the part over and just scanning inside the part and getting these surfaces. Uh, so these are machine surfaces inside of this oil pump. And you can see that as long as the scanner can see the surfaces, it's picking them up relatively well. Uh, we'll notice that down by where that shaft is that's inside the part, uh, there's a little bit of an obstruction for the lenses of the camera. Uh, so we're not capturing a lot of that data currently. We'll go in and try and get a little bit more of it maybe from another orientation. Uh, but what we'll see in the actual reverse engineering process is that capturing all of that data, every single aspect of that information, uh, really isn't all that important. As long as we have the basic profile and we understand what that shape's supposed to be, we can uh, really effectively reverse engineer this part. So go ahead and put it in. So go ahead and put the part in one more orientation here. And we'll just do a little bit more scanning. We'll focus in on getting some of that data that's down in the internal area of the part, moving it back and forth side to side, just getting some of that detail. And then for good measure, we'll go ahead and just scan around the outside of the part one more time, just to make sure that we've got all of the little pieces and nooks and crannies that are gonna be important to us for this part. Okay, so now that we're done with the scanning portion of this process, we can go ahead and move over to our editor tab and start editing out these individual scans. So inside of our editor tab, we'll see our uh, eraser tool. And with that eraser tool, what I'm gonna do is just uh, cut off the bases of these parts. So we do have a base removal process inside of Artec Studio. However, just to show off this aspect of the software, it's nice to just walk through these parts real quick, erase some of this information, and give you a feel for what it's like to remove any unwanted data from a part. This could be having a hand inside of the scan, uh, or if you have some sort of fixture that's holding the part in a sort of certain orientation, it's really nice and convenient to be able to just quickly delete that before we go into any of our alignment processes. So we'll just move through here. And finish erasing all of that data that we don't want. And now we're left with are three individual scans. So with these three scans, you can see the raw data from the scanner uh, looks like it's got a lot of noise in it. Uh, and that's perfectly normal. That's, that's how these parts traditionally show up. Uh, so with that, we'll go through our alignment process and then we'll talk a little bit about how we're really gonna clean up this part. Uh, so inside of our align tab, we can see we've got uh, all three of our scans. One is blue, which is indicating that it is currently locked in place. And now we can take our scan two and rotate that around. I'm using my shift key and my middle mouse wheel to just get the part relatively close to where it should be. Somewhere kind of like that. And then we can go ahead and press a line. And it's going to automatically align those two parts together for us. Moving on to our third scan, 
we can take this one and we'll treat it a little bit differently. We could definitely just do that same align process if we uh, so choose to. However, there may be situations where uh, you have trouble identifying or getting the part to line up correctly, especially if we're dealing with a lot of flat surfaces or something like that, or a very highly mirrored part. Uh, so in those instances, it's really useful to use a marker-based alignment. And to do a marker alignment, we're just going to find some key features on our part that we can correlate back to one another. Uh, these could be bolt hole locations, uh, little corners, or any sort of aspect that is similar from one part to the next. And once we feel like we've got enough of those features, we can simply just press align markers. They'll snap those two parts into place. And then we can just go ahead and press our align one more time with a little bit more of a fine alignment into uh, those scans. And now we've got all three scans aligned and ready to be turned into a fusion. So we'll press apply. And now we've got those three scans here and we're gonna go over to our tools tab and uh, we're going to run through a couple of different processes. So we want to do a global registration that's going to really accurately uh, go through all of the individual frames of these scans and register them precisely to one another. Uh, then we're going to do an outlier removal that's going to get rid of a lot of this excess noise in the part because it's a metallic part it does generate a fair amount of noise around the part itself uh, and then we'll finally create a sharp fusion of this object so to make this process a little bit quicker instead of doing these individual processes manually we're going to go to our auto tab and simply just select the three tools that we want global registration, outlier, and sharp fusion. Then we'll go ahead and press go, and we'll give it just a couple of minutes to process this data out and give us a fusion file. Okay, so now we can see we've got our completed uh, fusion of our part here. And if we look at it, we can see the outside of this pump is uh, really good and accurate and clean. On the inside of the pump, we can see that we've got the majority of the data. However, there is some missing information in there. Uh, and that is a key thing to look at when we're doing reverse engineering of a part is quite often we don't need every single aspect of that part. And if we don't need it, we don't need to spend all the extra time trying to get into really tight nooks and crannies on the insides of those surfaces. Uh, all the information that we have here is more than adequate to be able to really precisely reverse engineer this part. So we'll go ahead and take this uh, fusion file, we'll export that out to our desktop. And we'll go ahead and open up SOLIDWORKS and start reverse engineering this part uh, using SOLIDWORKS and a plugin called Mesh to Surface.